I'm thinking about going somewhere and sitting down and starting my hair. Starting to plait my hair. I just got through shampooing it. I think it needs to dry completely first. I think I'm going the right way to get out. So, anyway, I'm going to go up front and I'm going to see if they have a space available. If not, I hope I didn't. Run over nothing. If not, uh, restaurant and another one is like I don't know what kind of restaurant to call it but I'm gonna go by both of those restaurants eventually and do a food review I don't know if they could turn the music down for me while I do a review but we'll see so anyway, let's drive up front and see if they have a spot available so we'll know we can come back here tonight. Or maybe I should just go on. Because if they have a spot available, then what I'll do is I'll just stay here and do my hair. But maybe I should just go and go downtown. I think that's what I do. Just go and go downtown. Okay, y'all. So let's Ease on down, ease on down the road. Don't you carry nothing that's gonna be alone. Ease on down, ease on down the road. So, I posted a video today and it was talking about dealing with depression while living in the van and Thank you guys for all of y'all prayers. You know, yes, I do suffer from depression, but my depression is like I get in my funk, I cry, I sit, I lay around or whatever it is I need to do. And then I talk to God about it while I'm in my funk, I talk to God about it and then I move on like God give me the strength to move on so let me see if I could get some directions hold on let me know when uh I'm having these kind of talks if y'all would rather see my face or y'all would rather see the road hey Siri Give me directions to downtown Abilene. Say 29 minutes. Starting route to Abilene. Head north on Park Road 32. Then turn right onto FM 89. downtown I don't know if she gonna take me downtown okay so y'all
y'all let me y'all let me know if y'all would rather for me to have these kind of talks with the camera facing me or you want to put it toward the road and let you see when I'm driving but I'm having a like a serious talk with you guys so somebody has said that the people that have done you wrong are not gonna let you hold them hostage forever they are going to move on and you need to too girl I deleted that comment <laughs> what do you mean the people in your life that did you wrong are not gonna let you hold them hostage forever they are gonna move on and so should you you are a prime example of somebody that done somebody wrong and think people should move on. First of all, people have moved on. First of all, people are trying to move on. The hurt and the pain still hurts. And just because you feel comfortable moving on because you are not the one being affected by the hurt and the pain, don't mean that nobody trying to hold you hostage just because people are trying to find their healing, just because people are trying to find their peace, just because people are trying to come to terms with things that people have done to them and that might take a lifetime because you, the person that never acknowledged that you did nothing to them and you swept everything under the rug and you didn't get them help and you hid the truth just because you feel at peace to move on or to to die and go to hell because you really didn't move on because you don't ever want to think about it. I, I don't know. I don't know if a person that have done things to a person have truly moved on if they have never acknowledged what they done. I think they are miserable. I think they are uh, what do you call it? I think they are tormented. And I think that they are shamed and embarrassed to the extent that they are willing to go to hell. Instead of acknowledge and admit the truth and ask the person for forgiveness. I don't think people that have suffered from things in life or depression are trying to hold other people hostage. I'm not trying to hold nobody hostage. I could care less at this point in my life. I have moved on. That's why I left them alone. Like your some of y'all comments don't even make sense. Like if a person walk away from everybody that have hurt them, everybody that is not willing to acknowledge their part in that person's hurt and pain. If a person walks away from those people, don't call them people, don't talk to them people, don't reach out to them people. That person ain't trying to hold nobody hostage. Can y'all please make your comments make sense can you make your logic actually make some logic because if people are leaving people alone and walking away from them they're not trying to hold nobody hostage they saying I choose my peace I choose my happiness I choose myself and now I see that I am never going to have your help to help me to recover from what you've done to me so I'm gonna just let you live with whatever you did to me that you don't want to acknowledge that you don't want to confront that you don't want to ask me for forgiveness for I'm gonna let you go ahead and live with that and I'm gonna let I'm gonna dump you and everything that you did to me, I'm going to dump that on God. And now, I'm going to seek 
God for my healing by myself because I can't do it with you because you won't acknowledge what you did. And stop sign. Turn left. So I think that was a very idiotic comment to make and it just proves the train of thought of people who have done wrong to people and just want the person to sit down, shut up. I'm going to talk about what has happened to me as a child until the day I die. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to write books about it. I'm going to do podcasts about it. I'm going to interview other victims. I'm we we going to talk about it. We're going to talk about what happened to us. At the stop sign, turn left onto Little Street. And we're not trying to hold nobody hostage. It happened to us. It is our story. It is nobody's. Nobody have the right to tell you, stop talking about it and move on. I am moving on. It's What's my move miles. on? What my move on look like for me don't have nothing to do with you. My moving on has to do with talking about what happened to me, making, bringing awareness to what happened to me, bringing awareness that it wasn't right, and whether the people that did it to me are living or dead, I am going to say what it is I have to say. And the thing about it is, if I'm talking about what happened to me and the people still living, they don't want to hear what I got to say. They ain't never reached out to me and said, let's sit down and talk about it. They don't want to hear what I have to say. So maybe eventually because I never talked to it. I never was able, that person never gave me the opportunity to talk to them, to tell them what I went through as a child, to tell them what they did to me, to tell them how what they did to me impacted me, to tell them how what they allowed others to do to me impacted me. They never gave me that opportunity. So I kept that stuff in forever. It smothered me. It was killing me. I'm letting it out and I am going to talk about it and I don't care who don't want to hear it. And I don't care if you, the spectator, feel like, oh, well, you need to let it go. I am letting it go. I'm talking about it. I'm letting it go. How long I'm going to talk about it? Forever. Forever. How long are they going to ignore that they did what they did? Forever. They gonna ignore it forever. So I'm gonna talk about it forever. I'm gonna talk about it so this will never happen to anybody else. And I'm gonna talk about it so if anybody is doing this to anybody else, they know eventually that person can call them out. I'm not the only person that this happened to. A lot of people have lost their lives being suffocated and smothered by what other people have done to them that want to tell them to move on and they couldn't move past the hurt and the pain so I'm standing for myself and everybody else that this has happened to domestic violence physical, mental abuse, sexual abuse, neglect, abandonment. I'm standing for it all. And I don't care who don't like it. And I don't care who have something to say about my story and my life. God knows what happened to me. God knows what happened to me. God knows who did what they did to me. And God knows whether or not that person has repented and acknowledged what they've done. And 
God knows whether or not those people are saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost and whether they saved or sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost or not. I'm still going to talk and I'm still going to tell my story. Because to me, a, a sign of that person's salvation, if that person is still alive today and that person say they are saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost and they know what they did to you or what others did to you that they allowed to do to you, to me, in my opinion, a part of them moving on in their relationship with God is coming to you and asking you for forgiveness. That's what the Bible says. So when you come to me with that idiotic train of thought saying they've moved on, they ain't moved on moving toward the Lord. People can move on. Moving on don't mean they moved on to righteousness. Don't mean they moved on to holiness. Some people can move right on to hell. <laughs> so you saying people have moved on, you ain't said nothing. What have you truly said? You ain't said nothing. Have they moved on to acknowledge the truth? Have they moved on to repent? Have they moved on? How can they truly heal? So, I mean, just because people move on don't mean they're trying to move on towards healing. How can somebody that did something to somebody else heal if they never ask the person for forgiveness and if they never acknowledge it, they never say, yeah, I did it. How can they heal? So ain't nobody moved on from nothing if they ain't willing to have an open conversation about it. And so for you spectators who want to tell somebody else how to find their healing, I'm not telling nobody how to find your healing, how to find your peace. This is my story. This is my life. This is my path. This is my journey. I'm just sharing it. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a psychologist. I am not bitter. I am not angry. I am a person that is still struggling every single day of my life. To deal with depression. And whether it's just like an alcoholic. It doesn't matter how long the alcoholic is sober. They still call themselves an alcoholic. I am a person who grew up wanting to self-harm myself as a child, being depressed, getting in relationships that made it worse because I was attracted to the same type of people <laughs> that my daddy was. I was attracted to garbage and trash and and well, they was attracted to me, girl, because I don't know how I wanted that for myself. But depression is not something that there's a pill for. There are many people that suffer from depressions and doctors put them on pills and then they get addicted to the pills. Their depression is not something that there's a pill for, in my opinion. Those pills At the next line, cause problems. Those pills handicap you. Those pills just sugarcoat the problem. Like else can a person work through depression unless they talk through it unless they talk to the person that did things to them and because people are not willing to talk to people then that kind of stunts their process of healing but then eventually they have to realize that I'm not gonna have this person as a part of my healing. Use the right lane to turn onto Beltway South. Let me see where I'm supposed to turn. At some point, that person.
person has to realize I'm not going to have that person turn right in my life as a part of my healing. So I am going to have to seek my healing the best way I can. And if that means talking about it for the rest of your life. In 2.6 miles, turn left onto US Highway 83 Frontage Road. Nobody else can tell somebody else what they need to do for their healing. So I don't listen to you people who think you know it all about my life. You don't know about my life. You don't know the people that did what they did to me. You don't know the level of cover-ups that happened in my family. You don't know the generational curses that have repeated themselves over and over again in my family. You don't know everything. You don't know everything. You don't even know the past of what I might be dealing with mentally and physically. You don't even know the half of it. You don't even know the half of it. But you think you can tell me what I need to do when I'm the one that's been living with this my whole life. And living with and dealing with the people that did what they did to me. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. If I could sue people for the things that they did to me, I'd, I'd have every last one of them in court. I really would. I'd have them all in court. to another family member and they make excuses for that person. They make it, I don't believe he did that. I don't believe he did that. I believe the person is lying. Well, you don't have to believe the person did it or not. You weren't there. Why defend somebody? And I told them, I said, I learned A long time ago not to say what somebody else didn't do or couldn't do or would never do you do not know what's in the heart of other people and you don't know what other people are capable of So you can't sit up here and say, well, I don't believe that person did that. You don't know what that person did. You don't know what that person was capable of. And then 
some of the things that you know for a fact that that person did, to me, makes them more capable of anything else that they may have been accused of. Like what sense does that make? 
make? What sense does that make? And then you know that that person was accused of other things that you don't believe that they did, but you know they're capable of a whole lot more. Why you didn't take your child there? It's just utterly despicable with people saying, move on, they've moved on, they've died, or they moved on, or they burning in hell. Well, they may be dead, and they may be moved on, and they may be dying, uh, they may be burning in hell, but I'm still going to talk about it. If what I'm saying is true, and one thing about it is, all they could do is say, she lying. That's all, that's all they could do. But then at the end of the day, I got the answer to God. And you got the answer to God too. So if I'm lying, if you call me a liar, then you lying again. You're going to be judged by God twice. You're going to be judged by God for doing what you did. And then you're going to be judged by God for turning around and lying and saying I'm lying. See, I'm not trying to be judged by God. I'm trying to get myself right with God. So I don't have time to lie on anybody. I ain't never lied on nobody and none of the stories I've told about my childhood I've never lied. I don't have time to do that because you reap what you sow. Like, if I'm lying on people then God gonna judge me. I'm not trying to be judged by God. I'm trying to go to heaven, girl. I wish God would come back right now. trying to get to downtown, downtown Abilene. And uh, somebody was telling me, this girl at the grocery store was telling me about Circus Olay. Uh, I'm kind of hungry, even though I got plenty of food in the bag. Some chicken, I could warm up with some corn. It's probably what I'm gonna have to do. I'm probably gonna have to go to a gas station. Uh, did y'all know that there are three universities in Abilene? McMurray University. This sign right here say McMurray University is that way. There's McMurray University and a Christian University and another university. So, I didn't know that. I've been watching uh, some videos on things to do in Abilene. I didn't know that Abilene was a military uh, state, I mean city. The military is heavily embedded in this community. Fort something, Fort something. Is it Fort Braggs? Or I may be uh, quoting that wrong, but Fort something is here. Air Force Base or something. I, I can't remember exactly. But anyway, y'all, y'all, I was just running my mouth. Uh, I don't know what happened, where I left off at. But anyway, I am about to end this video because pretty much this is a talking video and I'm going to figure out where I'm going and what I'm going to do and then I'll start another video. Uh, I was saying people need to be very careful on what they tell people move on and like some people have more consideration for the people who have done wrong to people. At the light, turn left onto North Seventh Street. Then for the victims. So y'all let me know in the comments bar below 
what y'all think about this conversation, what you think about moving on, what you think moving on looks like. I think leaving people alone the next stop sign, turn left. and not talking to people for years is moving on. I haven't talked to my mom since 2007. I went to visit a family member the other day and that person said, oh, I haven't seen you in like 15 years. <laughs> I think that's moving on. Like moving on and leaving people alone. At the stop sign, turn left onto Walnut Street, then arrive at your destination. Okay, I asked them for So I need to find a nearby uh, park so I can go park and walk me some. So anyway, I'm going to end this live, uh, this video. Thank y'all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to be notified each and every time I upload a new video. Uh, and please share Arrive your thoughts and your Arrived. comments respectfully please don't leave no crazy comments on my channel because i do delete crazy comments that don't make sense when i say comment you know yeah everybody got an opinion but some things people be saying it just don't make sense and it's not logical like and if you're not a logical thinker like I, me you can't talk if you're not a logical thinker, we, we can't talk. So, I ain't gonna even have no conversation with you in the comments because we, we can't talk if you don't think logical. <laughs> so anyway, y'all, I'm gonna talk to y'all later. I appreciate y'all and I love y'all. Thanks for watching. Bye now.